We killed Opaline accidentally. Poisoning Opaline. Misty was happy. She had finally gotten her cutie mark and she had real friends. Of which were the ponies that had treated her with kindness and acceptance, as well as forgiven her for her misdeeds. Now she was working for them as a spy on Opaline, her adoptive mother that had lied to and abused her just about her whole life. For all Misty knew now, Opaline could have stolen her from her real parents. But Misty would work to stop her from the inside. The blue unicorn was bored. There was nothing to do until Opaline called her for some sort of task. At least she could admire her new cutie mark, which was of a butterfly. Something she'd always sketched on her flank. But now, it was real, and she couldn't be prouder. Of course, it was now getting old looking at the mark over and over again. Misty wanted more than anything for an excuse to leave the castle and hang out with her friends. But she knew that Opaline could be watching them with a magic pool this very moment. If Misty were to talk to them, and Opaline were to spot it, she would get suspicious. Misty had to make sure her so-called mother didn't suspect her, or she'd get punished like never before. As long as she was in the castle, she could tell her friends what Opaline was up to. But so far, the evil queen had not told her anything. Misty? Opaline's voice called from outside. I need you. Misty got to her hooves. Uh, coming, Opaline. She then looked at her cutie mark. She needed to cover that up. She'd used her tail during the first couple of days after getting it, but Opaline would notice that sooner or later. Fortunately, Misty had thought of a solution with her friends. When she got the chance, she'd texted them and they'd gotten her a bottle of paint that matched her blue coat. She'd snuck off to Maritime Bay after Opaline went to sleep and retrieved it just the night before. Quickly using her new magic to open the paint bottle and levitate the brush she'd been given with it, she covered the bristles with paint and brought it to her flank. It tickled as she painted over the cutie mark and made it appear as if she didn't have one. Once she set the brush and container down, she headed to Opaline's throne room. <sighs> what took you so long? The evil alicorn queen asked. Oh, just getting out of the bathroom. Misty lied. <laughs> well, I need you to do something for me. Opaline said. Go and get my favorite smoothie. Oh, um, right, uh, right away, Opaline. Misty said. She was about to run off, secretly looking forward to seeing her friends. But... Wait. Misty stopped. We can't have you looking the same as you always do. Those ponies could recognize you. Here. She lit up her horn and pointed it at Misty, who shivered. But when she was hit with the spell, it didn't hurt as she expected. Instead, it changed her coat and mane, inverting them. Now she was a green pony with a blue mane. Try to style it in another way to be sure. Opaline said as she ran a hoof through Misty's mane. Um, right, Opaline. Misty said. She ran off, grinning as soon as she turned away from Opaline. She galloped out of the dark castle across the bridge and along the path towards Maritime Bay. Then she got out her cell phone and began using her magic to insert a number. Zip's phone rang as she sat at the table in the crystal bright house with Sunny, Izzy, Hitch, and Pip. She looked at her phone and saw Misty's picture. She smiled. Well, well, our inside pony's calling, she said. Oh, put it on speaker. Zip answered the call. Misty! Don't say my name! Their spy's voice came in. Unless you're in the Bright House. <laughs> we are, don't worry, Zip said. Misty had shared with them several details about Opaline over the last few days by text. This included the facts that she couldn't spy on them with her magic pool while they were in the Bright House thanks to the Unity Crystals. From now on, whenever they talked about their enemy, they made sure to do it strictly here. Are you okay? Has Zopaline found out you're spying on her? Sunny asked in concern. Are you hurt and need rescuing? Izzy asked. I'm fine, but Opaline has me out doing a task. I'm heading to Maritime Bay, but I'm in disguise. She changed the color of my coat from blue to green, so you guys wouldn't recognize me. I'll be there soon. Within an hour of galloping, Misty was there. She entered the Bright House and faced her friends. So, what's Opaline sent you here for? Stealing the Unity Crystals, destroying the garden... Oh, destroy the garden to distract us so you can steal the Unity Crystals? Izzy guessed. 
No, nothing like that. She wants her favorite smoothie. Teeming Fire Blast with a purple heart. Misty said. Oh, so that's who you had me make that smoothie for. Sunny said, growing a frown. Maybe I should lace it with something terrible to make it taste bad. They looked at her and laughed after a moment. I never thought I'd hear you say you actually want to make a bad smoothie, Sonny. Hitch said. It would serve her right, though. Pip said. Maybe we should put something even worse in it. Get her sick. They laughed again. You know, this could be a good opportunity to stop her. Zip said. What do you mean? Misty asked. Well, she doesn't know that you're our spy. And we need to take advantage of that while we can. Who knows when she'll make her next move? I say, we strike first. Uh, how do we do that? Izzy asked. By putting something in her smoothie. Zip said with a smirk. What, like, poison? You want to assassinate her? Hitch asked. No, I mean, I don't want to kill her unless we really have to. Zip said. But maybe we can drug her and knock her out and then arrest her. I mean, yeah, that could work. Sunny said. Can't really wait around for her to make the next move. I didn't listen to you when you tried to warn me about the evil pony out there until she or Misty led us into a trap. I know you didn't mean to, Misty. She added as she looked at their new friend and team member. I'll go and get some chemicals to make the drug. Pip said. All right, time to get all sciencey. Izzy said excitedly. Pip headed to the store nearby where a unicorn alchemist had a bunch of ingredients for potion making. They were soon all in the lab beneath the main melody where Pip made her beauty products. But today she was going to make a drug to knock a pony out. Literally. Usually she'd go for figuratively. Okay, essence of nightshade. Pip said as she picked up the last crucial part of the drug. A couple drops of this will be enough to put any pony out for a nice long nap. You sure will work on an alicorn? Zip asked. Uh, I think it might not be as effective. I mean, I took some for sleep a couple of nights ago. Sunny said. My alicorn power started kicking and it didn't work. Oblaine mentioned that alicorns are resistant to drugs now that I think about it. Misty said. <sighs> okay, I guess we'll have to up the dosage. Pip said, as she squirted in double what she gave herself to be able to sleep on restless nights. That would kill a normal pony, but it would hopefully not do the same for Opalane. Uh, I don't know about this, guys. Sunny said. What if it kills her? Uh, might be a good idea to have an antidote handy, just in case. Pip said. She looked through her science book and found an antidote for the poison version of the drug. Pip made it and Sunny got started on the smoothie, while Misty got a purple heart from a store nearby. They put the poison inside, then Misty added the heart while Pip carried the antidote. Alright, time to stop Queen Opaline, Zip said. Her evil days are over, Izzy declared. She's about to face the jury, Hitch said as he stomped to the ground. I've got to make sure she can't use her alicorn magic to escape. Follow me, Misty said. But keep your distance in case Opaline starts watching. They let Misty get ahead so they could barely see her, then followed her into the forest northwest. Misty made sure to mark the trail with her hooves, making lines in the dirt every few trees for her friends to follow. Finally, they arrived. Opaline's dark castle came into view. The main five shivered at the sight of it. That's still the creepiest place I've ever seen, Izzy said. Oh, we had to make it a Nightmare Night Hangout! Pip said. They could see their agent making her way across the bridge and galloped after her. Opaline waited on her throne as her pet raccoonicorn ran around. Ugh, that little pony is sure taking her sweet time. The raccoonicorn nodded with his arms folded in a disapproving manner. She chuckled. You know, you might make a good sidekick if I ever want to employ the critters to aid me. Opaline said. I bet you love stealing, don't you? The critter nodded with a wide open smile, as if to say, Yeah, yeah, yeah! Good. Perhaps I'll send you to Maritime Bay to acquire things for me from now on. I have plans for Misty now that will require her complete attention, 
so I can't waste her on something as trivial as a smoothie. Although it is important for me to have something tasty to drink as a queen. Then, the front door opened. Opaline, oh, I got it. Misty said. Ah, oh, took you long enough. Opaline said, even though it had been much quicker than expected. She reached out with her magic. The smoothie flew from Misty's hoof into Opaline's. She took hold of it and sucked on the straw. She frowned. Oh, tastes a little off. Actually, way off. What sort of smoothie did you get me? Opaline asked. Oh, just a little something to help you sleep. A new voice said. Sunny Star Scout entered the castle with her friends, smirking at Opaline in defiance. Misty smirked as well. Opaline's mouth fell open. Misty, you... you let them hear? She exclaimed. That's right. And now we're taking you down. Misty said. You... you traitor! Opaline roared as she called upon her alicorn magic. Her horn lit up and her wings became engulfed in blue-purple fire. The main five, or main six, now that Misty had officially joined the group, prepared themselves for battle. But Opaline was suddenly feeling ill and tired. Her vision began to blur. What? What did you do to me? She asked as she suddenly began to stumble and cough. We may have laced your smoothie with a bit of nightshade. Misty said. Alright, now you be a good little bad alicorn and let me give you this ant- Pip flew towards the enemy with her antidote to prevent any deadly effects, but Opaline cried out in rage and interrupted her. No! Her spell fired at Pip, who screamed and dove out of the way, dropping the antidote she'd been carrying, which fell onto the floor. The glass bottle broke. Oh no! Sunny screamed. Opaline began to choke more desperately as she clutched out her throat and coughed, her eyes turning red. Then, she fell to the floor of her castle. Opaline! Misty screamed, running to her side as the spell inverting her colors deactivated. No, 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 we were just trying to put you to sleep! Opaline tried to say one final mean thing to the pony whom she'd raised as her own, but her poisoned throat wouldn't allow it. She gagged, and her head fell. Misty sighed. Oh, Blaine. This is not how I wanted it to end. A few tears escaped her eyes. Despite everything, there was still a part of her that cared for her adoptive mother. I'm sorry, Misty. Zip said. So, what do we do now? Izzy asked. Without her, there's no opposition. No villain to drive and challenge us. Or give the story a twist. Pip said. Or any mysteries for you to solve, Zip? Sonny said. Zip Hoof planted. Ugh, what have I done? I've ruined this whole story with one little suggestion. Well, there's always a new villain, isn't there? Hitch asked. Suddenly, a raccoonicorn came scurrying into the throne room. He saw Opaline and ran to her side. Realizing she was gone, he glared at the main six. I'll destroy you little ponies for this, the raccoonicorn said. Uh, he just said he'll destroy us, Hitch said, pointing. They looked at him with wide eyes for a moment, then began laughing. Introducing the next major villain, Killer Raccoonicorn, Izzy said. They all rolled over laughing. The raccoonicorn frowned for a moment, then couldn't help but laugh as well. It was ridiculous. He had always loved Hitch. Though, being able to steal whatever he wanted under Opaline had been a good offer. Well, that was an untimely demise. What a way to freaking go. Overall, this was a solid story. I freaking loved it. Now, let's get on to our not-poisoned donators. Top donators, Jesse Smith, Zar630, Badass Waffle, Only One Thing, Suru Ryan, and Kalidus. Magivic, Jock, Lucy, Raiden, Runescythe, Will, Twinkie, Luigi, Chancer Crust, Big Smoke, Murder Princess, Little Mighty, Solar Symphony, and many more amazing people. Thank you all so much for watching this video, and live life to the fullest.